Hello everyone! In this video I will dive into the world of shaders. So what's a shader you ask? Well, basically it's like a mini program for each pixel on your screen. Starting with Android 13, we can use brand new shading language to write these mini programs. It's called Android Graphics Shading Language or AGSL. Here you can see the most basic example of AGSL shader. The main function is an entry point. It takes the position of the pixel as an input and returns the color of the pixel. Black in this case. However, by altering the returning vector we can get different colors. There are two types used in this example. Float2, input vector holding two decimal numbers and half 4 output vector holding 4 decimal numbers with lower precision. Shaders work their magic by applying transformations to a whole bunch of elements at once, like every pixel in the screen area. Now let's open Android Studio and write some code. I define a shader source variable to hold the AGSL code and create a runtime shader executing the code. Don't forget that this is a new feature, so to make it work set the minimal API level of your app to 33 or more. Then I apply the shader as a render effect to the graphic layer modifier of the whole surface area. Since the runtime shader is defined, Android Studio can recognize that the shader source is not just a simple text but AGSL code and provides me with nice syntax highlighting. I write the same simple one color shader as before and after rebuilding the app you can see the result on the device. I can change the color or even use fragment coordinates to create a beautiful color gradient. To do it I have to know the real screen resolution to calculate the right color. I can quickly test it with hard-coded values to see how it looks on my device. However, to make it more robust I would need to set the screen resolution to the shader. Here I can use setFloatUniform method to pass a vector as a parameter. Let's call the vector size and set the width and height of the screen as the first and second values of the vector. Then I have to create a uniform vector with the same name in the AGSL code to obtain the screen resolution. And the result should be the same. And since I am dividing two vectors, I can use shorter notation that looks like this. Now let's create a text in the center of the screen and apply the same shader to the text. To make it work, I would need to make a few small adjustments in the implementation. For example, instead of create shader effect, I will use create runtime shader effect method, which executes the provided runtime shader and passes the contents of the render nodes that this render effect is installed on as an input to the shader. So basically, I can access the pixel color of the text inside AGSL code. So I create another uniform variable, this time a shader called composable. But at first let's turn on clipping to keep the output of the graphic layer inside the shape of the text composable. Now we can evaluate the text shader to get the opacity of the text and combine the opacity with the color of the AGSL shader to get the final image. And that's it. Another way to take advantage of AGSL shader is to manipulate pictures. I just replace the text with the image, load the bitmap and set the content description. Now let's remove the code responsible for the color gradient and evaluate only the input shader which should render the image. It works, but it could look better if I scale the image to the whole screen. AGSL syntax allows us to easily reorder any vector. 
For example, I can switch green and blue colors and the picture will look like this. Or like this. This is a nice trick, but AGSL is capable of much more. Let's create some animation. To animate the shader, we would need a time component. One way to achieve it is to start a new coroutine and frequently update the time variable that will be propagated to the shader as a uniform number. I use the current time and change it to a decimal number from 0 to 1 in an infinite loop. Then I use the same set float uniform method to propagate this value to the shader. I set the value as a color of the output of the shader to see if everything works as expected. And the app stop responding. Probably because the while loop has no delay. Ok, now everything works and you can see a blinking screen. But that it's not everything. First, let's calculate the distance from the center of the screen to each pixel. To do this, we can use built-in method called distance. I check if I calculate it correctly by visualizing the distance as a color of the pixel. We should see a radial gradient if everything is ok. When I apply the sinus function to the distance, we should see nice ripples. When I add time, these ripples will move. The last missing part is the direction to the center of the screen. When I multiply the direction with the value of the ripple, I get the offset according to which the image will be shifted. So I only need to add the offset to the fragment coordinate to calculate and evaluate the image shader with the new value. And this is the final effect. What do you think? Pretty cool, right? But you could make even more interesting effects using shaders. There are a couple of websites where you can find some inspiration. This website is called ShaderToy. You can find this train animation completely generated using math. Moreover, the source code is available too, so you can find out how it works. Or this one. However, the source code looks pretty complex and probably will run smoothly on mobile devices. Here is another website called Skia Shader Playground, where you can find simpler examples. Let's try to copy some code and run it as an AGSL shader. For example, this one looks pretty straightforward. But be aware that the code is in a slightly different GLSL language, not AGSL, so I need to make a few modifications. Firstly, I use different variable names. I have to change iTime to time, then the vector type is called float type in the AGSL, so I have to change it in a few places. And of course, I use size variable, not I resolution. Then it should work. Enjoy the animation. And if you found value in my content, I would greatly appreciate your support by hitting the subscribe button. See you next time.